गुड आफ्टरनून मैडम मैडम ओपुता समाधि ओ समाधि मैं ओगोलांगे लेक्चर का कराने एक्सटर्नल लेक्चर के ने मंसूर ज्वाइन करेगा ना हदन ने फोर डाकी इंदर काटिए ज्वाइन में ने क्या अंदर मावे है ना मदर
Lamai for the other than the Thomas had joined in the bad. So join me, thought you taking product in this.
Hello, sir. How are you, sir? Ah, uh, right. Okay, thank you. Ms. Kushani, uh, is it possible to uh, make me as admin? Uh, I think I still I cannot uh, share yes. my screen. I I will make you as presenter. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you all see the screen? Uh, Ms. Kushani, uh, can you all see, see my screen? Uh, yes, sir, we can see. Yeah, okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank KIO Managing Director, uh, Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Jagat Senuiratna, Honorary Vice Chancellor, Senior Professor Niluka Fernando, uh, Ms. Gayatri Salmali, Head of Finance, uh, Ms. Oshadi Rangika Pereira, Head uh, Department of Marketing, and uh, Ms. Kushani, uh, especially uh, Ms. Omesha head of uh, department of accounting giving us this valuable opportunity uh, we are conducting this course for uh, many local and uh, private universities and uh, leading uh, higher educational institute uh, so it's a pleasure to conduct a course for kiu first uh, i will explain course objectives and intended learning outcomes uh, we expect all of you to actively participate for the session. Since this is online course, it will be difficult to get your feedback. Therefore, please ask questions if you have or you can message any questions. Uh, in addition to that, we are available before and after the session. That time you can utilize for clarify your issues. Uh, most importantly, you should get proper knowledge from the course, how to register for Sage Business Cloud Accounting, how to implement the system, how to create master files such as customer, supplier, items, GL accounts, banks, etc., and how to enter transactions, how to generate reports, uh, how to design layouts. Uh, there may be professionals, business owners, and entrepreneurs and freelancers. Uh, for professionals, you can implement the system by yourself for your company. Uh, for business owners and entrepreneurs, you can analyze your company performance by using system dashboards and uh, MIS reports. If you are a freelancer or you are providing part-time accounting services, you can earn extra income by working as a service provider by implementing Sage Business Cloud Accounting. Especially, this is a cloud-based software. You can implement the system and support at any way and any time. Uh, after complete the course, there will be a final exam. Uh, in that exam, uh, 
you need to implement a system into transactions and generate reports and uh, you will get a certificate uh, if you achieve the pass mark. OK, right. Uh, next, uh, we will uh, explain about accounting softwares. Uh, there are two types of accounting softwares. Mainly it's uh, on premises or server based. And second one, cloud accounting software or online accounting software or web based accounting software. Now, uh, in server based means or on premises means uh, you need to install your accounting software to your server and in the network, within the network, uh, users only can log into the system. Now, for an example, if you are installing your uh, software to your server uh, in your company, then uh, when you are at office only, you can log into the system. The second option is cloud accounting software. And uh, from cloud accounting software, you can uh, use uh, the system anywhere and anytime. There's no installation by typing uh, that URL. You can log into the system and you can enter your uh, email address or login details. You can log into the system. And also you can uh, log in from any, any device. You can use tab, laptop, mobile or any device. Uh, and from anywhere you can log into the system. Right now uh, we are doing a cloud based accounting software. First uh, we will discuss what are the advantages of uh, cloud based accounting software. Now uh, cloud based softwares are very easily upgraded. Now uh, uh, if you uh, take server based software, once you install, uh, Next version you need uh, if you want to any upgrade next version also you need to install to your server. Uh, but in cloud based accounting software those uh, upgrades automatically upgrade to your system. Then uh, compared to server based software cloud based software is very uh, cost effective and uh, there's a uh, very low cost compared to server based software. Next, uh, always up. Now, if you install uh, your accounting software to your computers or servers at office, uh, you cannot log in when you are outside. So uh, if you are using cloud based accounting software, it's always up. Then uh, next one, disaster assistant. Now, especially in these days, uh, in uh, this uh, pandemic situation, you can log into your cloud accounting software anytime. Uh, even though your office is not available. Uh, next, uh, no IT maintenance cost. Actually, uh, if you are using server based software, uh, there will be high uh, hardware cost, especially uh, you need to uh, purchase a server, then you need to networking. So those expenses not in cloud accounting software. Uh, since uh, there is no installation, uh, no need to purchase uh, expensive servers and no need uh, softwares uh, or server softwares. So uh, it's uh, compared to server based, it's uh, cloud based software is very uh, less maintenance cost. Then uh, offsite data storage. Uh, if you are using server based software, you need to take backups and you need to uh, keep uh, in your office. But uh, in cloud based softwares, no need to take backups. The service provider taking backups and uh, so you don't want to take backups. And uh, productivity anywhere. So since uh, it's uh, available everywhere, uh, you can work and uh, compared to that server based software, you can work from anywhere. Therefore, uh, high productivity in cloud accounting software. There are many uh, cloud accounting softwares, uh, MyOB, Sohobox, uh, QuickBooks, Zero, Wave, like that. Uh, in this course, we will discuss Sage Business Cloud Accounting Software. Right. Next, uh, our course plan. First, we will discuss how to uh, register company. Okay, you can uh, create your companies, and uh, next, uh, how to create master files. Uh, how to create customer, supplier, inventory, GL accounts, bank accounts, 
uh, analysis code, sales reps, those things we will discuss. Uh, next, transactions, uh, customer transactions such as customer invoices, quotations, sales orders, receipts, and uh, supplier transactions, supply invoices, purchase orders, then bank transactions, uh, journal entries, those things we will discuss. After that, uh, we will discuss how to generate report, how to generate our financial reports, tax reports, audit reports, customer reports, supplier reports, uh, bank reports, uh, those reports we will discuss. Uh, next, uh, finally, we will uh, discuss how to design and how to uh, design reports ourselves. Okay, uh, today we will discuss uh, how to setting a company. Uh, first, uh, you can log into this uh, website and you can register for a free trial. Then uh, there are many uh, few uh, add-on modules. You can activate those add-on modules. Time tracking, multi-currency, advanced inventory, and data manager. Next, uh, you can enter your company details. And there's an add-on feature of, uh, of uh, customer zone. We will discuss how to activate our customer zone. Next, uh, we will discuss general settings. Uh, from general settings, uh, we will discuss how to create financial years and how to set regional settings, customer and supplier settings, item settings, time tracking settings, outstanding balances settings, and personal information settings. Next, uh, we will discuss tax settings, how to set tax rate and tax percentages. Uh, under documents and statements, uh, we can set document man uh, messages, document numbers, uh, document descriptions, customer document messages, and invoice and statements layouts. Next, uh, branding, uh, how to attach our company logo to our uh, system documents. Next, uh, user-defined fields, how to add user-defined fields for customer, supplier, items, assets, document, and tr uh, transactions. Next, uh, how to design our uh, email signatures. Uh, when we are sending invo uh, invoices, we can directly send our uh, customer documents to uh, our customers, such as uh, invoices, quotations. So when you are sending those documents, you can design your email signatures. Uh, next, uh, how to set up multi-currency, how to add home currency and how to add foreign currencies, how to set rates, right. those things we will discuss today. Uh, have you all uh, logged into your system? We have sent a uh, document how to log into your system. Is it uh, clear? Can you all log into your system? Ms. Chaturangi.
you may see yeah can you log can you log into this yes uh, can you log into the system have you received any email from uh, to uh, log into your uh, account or oh, samadhi uh, okay uh, it's better if you uh, now uh, you will receive a uh, first of all uh, we have uh, registered your email address as a user then uh, you will receive a, uh, you will receive an email from uh, no reply at sage.com then uh, you need to accept that uh, user account okay after that uh, and said uh, you can log into that uh, your account uh we have sent another document word document how to log into your system uh if you can log in uh, it's easy and if you have any issues uh please let me know okay now uh, we will discuss uh, how to set up your company settings first uh, we will discuss how to register for an uh, accounting software you can log into this uh, website this website uh, www.pwholdings.lk next uh, there's a button free trial you can click that uh, free trial button and uh, you can enter your company details uh, you can enter company name uh, please select country as malaysia then your first name last name mobile number email address uh, your password and you can confirm your password into this access code and uh, from these questions uh, you can select any answer uh, into what 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 you currently use if you are using any accounting software you can use or if you are manually doing or excel you can select for this question then uh, years in business you can select any year and uh, you can click click this i accept terms and condition and click sign up after you click sign up you will receive an email uh, in that email you need to confirm uh, within 10 days that link available only for 10 days after that uh, you can log into the system after you register for system you can uh, type this accounting.sage1.asia and uh, you can enter your email address and password and click login right uh, after that uh, you have logged into the system now we today we will discuss how to uh, set up our company settings uh, go to company change company settings first uh, you need to enter your company details from here you can uh, under company details you can enter your company name uh, company name telephone numbers fax numbers mobile contact person name uh, postal address physical address you can enter okay then uh, there are two options uh, you can enter email address here and there are two tick box uh, initially i discussed uh, that 
you can send documents from the system. Now, if you are invoicing, or if you enter quotations, you can uh, directly email those uh, quotations or any customer document. Right now, uh, in here, uh, if you tick first tick box and enter email address, uh, your customers will receive email from this email address. And if you tick second option, uh, your, when you are sending uh, customer documents via email, your customers will receive emails from this address. No reply at counting.sage1.my email address. And if you tick first tick box, uh, your customers will receive emails from this email address. Okay. And uh, CC address. Now, uh, sometimes uh, your company owner or CEO or any head of finance may need a uh, copy of that email uh, you are sending. So in that case, you can tick this always CC this email address and you can enter email address. Then uh, when you are sending emails that uh, this CC email also will receive emails. Okay, is it clear? Right now, you all can uh, log into your system and uh, you can enter your company details. Assume uh, you are planning to uh, start a company, or if, if you having currently also, if you have a company, you can enter those details. Okay, after you enter details, you can save.
OK, uh, is it clear? Right, uh, next uh, we will move to additional company information. Uh, from this uh, additional company information, you can enter your statutory information. First, uh, you can enter your company tax number, then company registered name, your registration number, company registration number, tax office, and entity type. From this entity type, you can select uh, company limited by guarantee, foreign company, limited liability partnership, partnership, private limited, public limited, and sole proprietor. Uh, based on your company, you can select this entity type. Next, uh, you can enter your city, state, and country. Uh, registered name, uh, now uh, sometimes you may use uh, different company as brand, company name as branding, and your uh, registered company may uh, different name. Uh, for an example, mostly hotels, uh, they are branding uh, one name, but uh, registered name is a different name. Uh, in that case, you can use uh, this registered name column for enter your uh, company registered name. Right. Uh, some countries use these uh, major industry codes. Uh, there are uh, codes for uh, that industry type. Now, for an example, Educational Institute has one uh, code, then uh, trading companies has a different code like that. There may be different industry codes. Uh, if uh, if uh, those codes available, you can enter here. But in currently Sri Lanka doesn't have that uh, industry codes. Therefore, you can keep this major industry code as blank. Okay. Now uh, you can enter this statutory information and additional company information. Uh, for tax office also, you can mention uh, Inland Revenue Department. And uh, sometimes uh, you may not uh, VAT registered or tax registered company. In that case, uh, you cannot and uh, you don't want to enter your tax details. And if you are a VAT registered company, you can enter your tax numbers and uh, tax office details. And uh, when you are practicing, now uh, you can keep two windows, one for uh, teams and one for that your accounting software. Then uh, that you can view from that uh, one window or teams window and you can practice uh, in your computer software.
Okay, uh, after you enter these details, you can save these details. By clicking the save button, you can save. Right, next uh, we will move to customer zone. Now, uh, this is a advanced feature in this uh, business cloud accounting software. Now, uh, if you enable this customer zone, your customers also can view their invoices, uh, quotations, what are the outstanding, their outstanding balances, customer statements, those details they can view online. Okay, I'll show you an example. First, uh, you can email your documents via email by clicking this email. You can email. When you are sending this email, uh, there will be a link. Okay, uh, when you are sending uh, your email, right? now you can see uh, you, you can design these uh, email signatures and with email you can send a link. Uh, then your customer can click this link. They can view the invoices online Okay, uh, by clicking this link, uh, you can view online. So you can view uh, that invoice. And also, if you click this invoices button, your customer can view uh, that customer's all invoices. Okay. Uh, that customer can view their all invoices. Uh, they can view invoice number, invoice date, uh, reference number, description, total, amount due. Now, uh, if your invoice is, uh, if you have done any payments or partially payment, uh, you can view amount due. And uh, if you settle fully, you can view uh, what is the outstanding amount. Then uh, you can view the status. Uh, if it is invoice, whether it's unpaid, paid, or partially or overdue, you can view from here. And also, uh, you can view how many invoices available, or uh, what are the transactions you have done uh, with uh, your company. Those details you can view. Then, uh, codes from here, uh, you can view what are the quotations uh, you have sent to that customer. Then sales orders, credit notes, payments. You can view all payments uh, your customers made. 
payment method also you can view receipt number, date, invoice, uh, total and payment method. Then uh, you can view that uh, statement and contact details. Okay, this uh, link is valid only for a few days. Uh, after that, when you are sending quotations, you can send new uh, link to that customer. Okay, like that, uh, your customers can view their statement online. First, uh, you need to enable that customer zone by ticking here, tick box you can uh, enable your customer zone. Then uh, there are two options, invoices and codes only. Second option, invoices and account history. Uh, if you select first option, your customers can view only invoices and quotations. And if you select second option, uh, your customers can view uh, invoices, quotations, credit notes, sales orders, and they can view their account history. And uh, here you can enter that company name uh, display in your company uh, customer zone. Now here you can see this uh, company name and logo. If you enter name here, that name will display uh, customer zone, right? Now, uh, especially now, if you are working, you may know uh, your customers always request their uh, previous invoices, copy of previous uh, invoices copy. And then after the audit, they will uh, request uh, confirm their balances uh, for audits. Uh, then uh, they will ask uh, quotations. Uh, copy of quotations. In that case, uh, you can directly send this uh, link. Then customer uh, can download their invoices, quotations, or they can get their balances uh, online uh, without disturbing you. Right now, you can uh, enable the customer zone, and you can tick uh, one of these options, and you can enter the uh company name displayed on your customer zone after you enter these details you can save When you take that option, enable your accounting customer zone, you will, uh, system will pop up a message. Do you want to enable the customer zone for all customers? You can click yes button.
Okay, uh, after you set up your customers on, you can save. Right, next uh, we will move to general settings. First, uh, financial years. Uh, from here, we can create our financial years. Now, uh, uh, in practical situation, you may implement your system for new company or old company. If you are implementing for new company, uh, you can start uh, from current year and uh, no need to create previous years. Now, uh, for an example, if you are implementing the system for all company, currently you are uh, using manual or Excel, but uh, now you are uh, moving to implement a system. Uh, when you are implementing a system for an old company, then uh, there may be opening balances, such as customer opening balance, supplier opening balance, GL opening balance, and inventory opening balances now uh, if you are if you have customer and supplier opening balances uh, there may be sometimes all outstanding now uh, sometimes they may have two three years uh, all outstanding or your customer or supplier outstanding available in that case uh, when we are implementing the system we can create few years back now for an example uh, currently we are in uh, 2020 2021 to 2022 financial year and if you have if your customer has outstanding from uh, 2017 you can create uh, financial years for that uh, all years okay you can create few transaction a uh, few years back and uh, then uh, you can enter their outstanding now, uh, if you if you want to uh, enter that old outstanding, uh, it's better to create few old uh, financial years. OK, and uh, now in your system, uh, that financial year may start from 1st of January, January to, to uh, 31st December. OK, your financial year start date uh, 1st of January 2021 to uh, then your financial year end date uh, 31st December 2021. Uh, in practical situation, some companies use their financial year as uh, January to December, or some companies use uh, July to June 30th, or some companies use 1st of October to uh, 30th September. Uh, in Sri Lanka, most companies use 31st, uh, 1st of April to 31st March. Uh, in that case, uh, you can set your financial years uh, from start date and end date. Okay, now sometimes uh, your company may have uh, 1st of January, 1st January uh, 2021 to uh, 31st December 2021, and uh, you can change that financial year start date and end date. You can click that uh, date range and you can change from this calendar or else you can just type that date and uh, you can change your financial year start date and end date. And if you are implementing this for uh, any foreign company, uh, you can change that date uh, based on that company. Sometimes uh, they may use 1st January to uh, 31st December or uh, first October 30th September like that there may be different financial years so be, according to your co uh, company financial year you can select that uh, financial year and uh, if you want to create future financial years by clicking this plus mark you can create financial years 
And also, if you want to remove any financial year by clicking this red color button, you can remove that financial years. Uh, and also, uh, there's no any uh, year in processes. Sometimes you may know uh, some uh, in different accounting softwares may has year in processes. But in here, Sage Business Cloud Accounting, there's no uh, year in process. Uh, by creating new financial year, you can continue your transactions. Okay, and uh, there's another tick current financial year. You can tick for uh, your current financial year. Now, if you have different uh, several financial years, you can select your financial year and you can tick uh, current financial year tick box. Now, currently we are in first April 2021 to 31st March 2022 financial year. Uh, therefore, we can tick for this financial year. And after next year, you can uh, tick this tick box to next financial year. Right. Next, uh, lockdown date. Now, uh, lockdown date for, uh, we can use this for our control purposes. Uh, if you set a lockdown, if you take this uh, set a lockdown date and if you enter any date here prior to this period, your users cannot enter transactions. OK, I'll repeat it again. If you uh, take this set a lockdown date tick box and if you enter lockdown date here uh, prior to this period, your users cannot enter transactions. Now, for an example, after audit, now uh, if you complete uh, 20, 21 year audit, uh, we can enter 1st March 2021. Then, uh, and we will tick here. Then, uh, prior to this period, your users cannot enter transaction. Okay. Now, for an example, uh, your users may, uh, system users may enter transaction by mistake to previous years. In that case, our financial years uh, will not accurate. Okay, if they by mistakenly enter to previous year, when you are generating uh, previous year report also incorrect, current financial year report also incorrect. Therefore, to mitigate those, those uh, mistakes, we can set a lockdown date. Or you can use this monthly also. Now, after you complete your uh, June month accounts, you can set 30th June. Uh, 30th June uh, 2021 as your lockdown date, then uh, your system users cannot enter transactions prior to this period. So you can use this lockdown date as a control purposes. Right now uh, you can create few financial years uh, and you can set a lockdown date. You can create financial years from uh, 2017 1st of April. OK, please create uh, financial years and set a lockdown date.
Okay, uh, you can add uh, financial years by clicking this uh, green color plus mark. And uh, if you want to remove any financial year by clicking this uh, red color button, you can delete financial year. And uh, you can enter or you can select uh, your financial year start date and your financial year end date. For your current year, current financial year, you can uh, take this tick box. OK, uh, you can create financial years and you can set a lockdown date. After that, you can save. Okay, uh, actually class has supposed to start at uh, 1 p.m. There are some uh, technical issues. There were because of that uh, little delay actually. Uh, but uh, you may log in from uh, 1 p.m. Uh, so shall we take a short break? Uh, we will take a 15 minute break and after that uh, we will discuss other uh, general settings. OK, we will start by uh, 2.50 uh, from next session also. Uh, we will start by 1 o'clock and uh, we will take a break at 2.30. Uh, and after that, we will con continue till uh, 4 o'clock. OK, uh, please take, we will take a break and we will join by uh, 2.50.
okay uh, we will discuss rounding uh, now from here you can uh, select rounding type now from rounding uh, we can round our uh, financial report figures uh, and we can rounding up rounding down or normal rounding or no uh, no rounding here we can set uh, after you select uh, round up uh, you can enter the to which point you can uh, you are going to round okay now uh, now the here you can enter the sense value now most of companies uh, in uh, big companies they will not mention uh, that sense value in their financial statements uh, in that case you can uh, round up that value so round up or round down no you can do normal rounding for your figures so rounding you can do from here uh, first you need to select rounding type and select round up round down normal rounding and no rounding uh, and uh, you can enter the sense value then uh, your figures will uh, round in uh, this uh, uh, value after you enter these uh, roundings you can save next uh, we will move to regional settings now uh, from regional settings you can set uh, value decimal places uh, hours decimal places and you can set your currency symbol and uh, you can set your date format first uh, we will check a example now uh, when you are entering your customer transaction we will open a customer quotation Right now here uh, you see two decimal places uh, in your value for quantity and value. First uh, we will check quantity decimal places. Here you can see two decimal places in quantity and uh, value figures. Here you can see two decimal places. Now uh, if you set two decimal places here when you are processing transactions you can view that uh, decimal places now now uh, for an example uh, if you are selling uh, vegetables sometimes uh, assume you are selling in kilograms and uh, grams you may need three decimal places in that case you can set three decimal places for this quantity decimal places Okay, now we have entered three decimal places. We will open the transaction and we will check.
Okay, now you can see three decimal places available here. Now, sometimes uh, if you are selling uh, uh, computers, that computers, you no need uh, that uh, decimal places, only uh, uh, full amount. Now, uh, if you want to remove decimal places, you can enter zero here and you can save. You will enter another quotation. Okay, now you can see uh, decimal places not available in the quantity. Next, uh, value decimal places. Uh, if you enter two here, you can view two decimal places. And if you want to increase or decrease, or if you want don't want to show decimal places, you can enter zero, then in your values, uh, decimal places will not display. Next, uh, hours decimal places. Uh, in Sage Business Cloud Accounting, uh, you can activate this time uh, tracking module. After that, uh, you can enter uh, your timesheet. Now, for an example, uh, if you are a, a consulting company, you may have uh, staff and you will charge for that uh, to your customer uh, based on how many hours your staff work for your client. Okay. In that case, you can enter your staff timesheet here. Then uh, you can bill those time to your client. Now here, uh, you can select a project and you can set uh, select task and uh, you can see there are uh, task uh, time you can enter. Then uh, in this hours decimal places, if you can, uh, if you set two, you can enter two decimal places in uh, your uh, time sheet. Okay. Now, if you want to enter only hours you can remove this uh, decimal places, then you can enter only by hours. Okay. Now, especially uh, if, you are, if you are working for a security company, uh, you can use this module, then uh, you can select uh, that your clients, for an example, uh, you say dialog, then uh, you are providing uh, security for uh, dialog, and you can enter how many hours you are, uh, your staff have worked for dialogue head office. Like that, uh, you can enter timesheet. Furthermore, uh, if you are providing uh, accounting consultancy services and uh, you are providing accounting services for Unilever, then uh, you can enter uh, your account and how many hours work for Unilever Colombo, then uh, how many hours uh, your accountant or account executive works for goal. Those details you can enter and uh, you can invoice this time to your client. Okay. From here, you can set decimal places and uh, based on that decimal uh, number of decimal places, you can enter uh, your working hours. Next, uh, currency symbol. Now, from here, you can enter your currency symbol. Uh, some companies may use rupees, or some companies may use LKR. Now, if you set LKR here, when you are entering transaction, that currency will display here. Now, if you Enter rupees. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, can't see the screens. Uh, now, okay.
OK, now uh, we have entered rupees. Now we will refresh the screen. OK, now you can see that currency changed to rupees. Like that, uh, you can set your company currency from here. And also uh, next uh, date format, you can set your date format from here. And there are three date formats, date, month year next second one year month date third one month date year like that uh, according to your company requirement you can set the date format after you set these details you can save and uh, one important thing uh, when you are entering this currency symbol, uh, please uh, enter only letters. Don't uh, enter spaces or dots or special characters. Uh, please enter only letters. OK, uh, sometimes when you are entering rupees, uh, you may enter dot, but don't enter that special characters. Uh, please only please enter only uh, letters. Now uh, you can enter this uh, region set regional settings. You can enter uh, quantity decimal places, value decimal places, hourly decimal places, and uh, your currency symbol. OK, uh, next uh, we will move to customer and supplier settings. Now, uh, first option, one when duplicate customer reference used on uh, customer invoices. Uh, now, uh, when you are entering transactions, we will open a customer tax invoice. Here you can enter customer reference. Now, uh, sometimes your customers may send 
uh, purchase orders, those reference number you can enter in customer reference. Now, uh, in this setting says, warn when duplicate customer reference used on customer invoices. Uh, if you tick this option, uh, if you are entering any duplicate customer reference, system will uh, display a warning message. Okay, if you tick this option, system will display a warning message. And if you untick this option, system will not make any warning messages. Even though uh, you by mistake and you have entered any duplicate values, system will not display warning message. Uh, this uh, option you can use for now. Sometimes uh, when you are entering that customer reference number uh, by mistake, uh, you may enter different uh, customer reference number. So sometimes you may enter. Uh, duplicate customer reference number. If you tick this option, then system will pop up a message and you can recheck and you can enter the correct customer reference number. Next, uh, second one. One main duplicate supplier invoice number used on your supplier invoices. Now, uh, in practical situation, one supplier will not issue same supplier num supplier invoice number again. Okay, one supplier will not issue same supplier invoice number again. So if you enter same uh, one or duplicate supplier invoice, system will think uh, it's a error uh, from your user. Then uh, system will pop up a message. If you take this option, system will pop up warning message if your user center duplicate supplier invoice number. Next one, uh, display inactive customers for selection when processing. Now, uh, sometimes uh, after you uh, dealing with your customers, uh, you will identify some customers will not pay him properly. Uh, some customers may long outstanding. So in that case, you want to deactivate uh, those customers. You can deactivate customers from uh, open that customer. We will discuss uh, these details uh, is how to create customers uh, when you are doing master files and uh, you can untick this option. If you untick this active option, that customer is a inactivated customer. Here also you can view this active uh, naughty for this uh, this customer. Therefore, this is a inactivated customer. So this option says uh, display inactive customers for selection when processing. If you tick this option, inactivated customers also will display in uh, when processing transaction. We will process the transaction now. A zero one is a uh, inactivated customer. We will do, uh, open new tab and we will enter transaction. Go to customers, transactions, customer tax invoices, click add a tax invoice. Now uh, when you select this uh, customer drop down menu, you cannot view that A01 customer. OK, now a01 customer available. Here you cannot view because uh, we have set display inactive customers when selection when processing. We have removed that tick. Therefore, a uh, system will not display inactivated customers. Okay, next uh, display inactive suppliers for selection when processing. Now, if you tick this option, your inactivated suppliers will uh, display when you are processing transactions. Same as customer, we will do. Uh, we'll go to supplier list. We will open a supplier and we will inactivate. If you untick this option, that supplier will inactivate. 
click save. Right now you can see this supply is inactivated. Now you will go to supply transaction. You will enter supply invoice. Click add supply invoice. A supplier, that supplier will not display. Okay. Because uh, we have set or we have unticked display inactive suppliers for selection when processing. Next, uh, display inactive customers for selection on reports. We have ticked that. Uh, now, here says uh, if you inactivated any customer, uh, display in the reports. Now, here these are transactions. When you are generating reports, go to reports. Sales by customer. Now here you can see a zero one customer. Even though that customer is a uh, that customer is an inactivated customer. Okay. If you if you untick this option, that customers will not display in the report. Next one. Uh, display inactive suppliers for selection on reports. Uh, if you tick this option, your inactivated suppliers will display in reports. Okay, now in previously we have inactivated this AA supplier. Uh, for transactions, this inactivated supplier not displayed, but for reports, uh, that supplier will display. Next, uh, use inclusive processing on customer supplier documents by default. Now, uh, in practical situation, uh, you may have, uh, you may work working for uh, tax registered company or uh, not non-tax company. If you have registered, uh, if you are working for tax registered company, they may use inclusive and exclusive amounts. Uh, exclusively without tax, inclusive with, uh, with tax. Now, uh, when you are processing transactions, we will open a customer tax invoice. We'll open an item. Okay, now uh, you can see the in the screen uh, exclusive price, okay, and tax and total exclusive price, tax and total. And uh, this setting says use inclusive processing on customer supply document by default. We haven't ticked this option, therefore, system will display exclusive amount. Uh, without tax amount. If you tick this option, system will display inclusive amount. Okay. Uh, system will display inclusive amount. Now, if you want to display inclusive amount, Take this option. If you want to display exclusive amount without tax amounts, you can untick this option. Next, uh, use account as default uh, line type selection. Now, uh, when you are processing transaction, you can see this item is displayed. There are uh, four options, item, account, time, bundle. 
Now, uh, when you are processing this customer invoice, you can select item, account, time, bundle. If you, if you select item, you can select that items you are selling. Uh, there may be physical items or service items. You can enter here and you can sell. And if you select account, you can select GL account. Now, for an example, uh, if you want to enter uh, electricity expenses uh, under supplier invoice, okay, when you are receiving your electricity bill, you want to enter that to the uh, system. In that case, we can select account and we can select electricity expense account. And uh, if you select time, or oh, sorry, bundle, uh, we can select bundle item, we will discuss that. And uh, there's another option. Time. Uh, when you select time, uh, you can invoice uh, that previously we have discussed uh, that timesheet. Those times you can invoice to your customers. Okay. Those times uh, we can uh, invoice to our customers. Now, now we are discussing this uh, account. Now if you set, if you tick here, then uh, uh, when you are entering any transaction, customer or supplier transaction, uh, by default it will display account. Now currently we are, uh, current time, time is, uh, item is display as a default type, but if you tick this option, uh, account will display as uh, default type. Okay. After you set these uh, settings, you can save. Right. Now, uh, before test these uh, settings, we will create a customer, supplier, item, and uh, item accounts. Okay. Right. Now, uh, for create customers, go to customers list list of customers customers list list of customers click add a customer and uh, you can enter customer name okay please enter uh, any customer name here and you can save okay other details uh, we will discuss in detail when we are creating master file Okay, first uh, you can go to customers list, list of customers and click add, add customer. Or you can directly create customers from customers, add a custom. Here enter customer name. And uh, you can save. One important thing, uh, there are uh, one option that uh, statement distribution method. Uh, there are four options, e none, print, email, print and email. Uh, if you select email, please enter email address here or you can set uh, this default statement distribution to print, then you can save, okay? Uh, first enter customer name and uh, change this statement distribution method to print and save your customer. Or if you select email, please enter an email here, then uh, you can save your customer. Okay, uh, please create two customers. Go to customers, add a customer and enter uh, that customer detail, customer name and save.
please create two customers and make uh, active one customer and please untick a second customer okay please create two customers and uh, untick this active button for active tag uh, tick box for one customer and tick for one customer okay then we can check these uh, settings Okay, next uh, we will create two suppliers. Go to suppliers, click add a supplier. Enter supplier name and save. Okay, uh, go to suppliers, click add a supplier. Enter supplier name and save. Please create two suppliers. And uh, when you are creating suppliers, please uh, inactivate one supplier by uh, removing this tick. Okay, uh, please create two suppliers and please inactivate one supplier.
Okay. Uh, after you create uh, customers and suppliers, uh, you can take this option and you can untick options. You can check uh, that uh, inactive customers will display in transactions and uh, inactive suppliers display in transactions and reports. Okay, uh, first uh, you untick these options, untick uh, display inactive customers for selection when processing and uh, untick display inactive suppliers for selection when processing. After that, uh, you can go to customers, transactions, go to customer tax invoice, take a tax invoice. From customer drop down menu, you can click this arrow, then uh, your customers will display. Please check that inactive customer display here. Same way, you can go to supplier transactions, suppliers transactions, supplier invoices. Click add supplier invoice. From here, you can check that uh, inactivated supplier. Uh, will display. Okay, uh, next uh, we will create an item. You can create items from this items, add an item. You can enter item code and item description. and uh, you can save. Okay, you can enter item code, item description, and you can save. Okay, like that, uh, you can create two items.
right? Uh, you can create two items. Uh, go to items, add an item, enter item code, item description, and save. Okay, so, right. Uh, now uh, here uh, you can go to regional settings and uh, you can set your decimal places and uh, you can check that items uh, correctly displaying that uh, decimal places. Okay, uh, we will wrap up for today. Uh, before wrap up, uh, next session we will start by one o'clock. Actually, today there was some uh, technical issue. Therefore, we, we will delay a little bit. Uh, next session we will start by one o'clock and uh, we will do a break around 2.30. And uh, now after four o'clock, you can practice this uh, today's session work. Okay, you can create customer, supplier, and uh, items and you can check uh, or you can create financial years and uh, you can set regional settings when you are creating items uh, please uh, create one uh, one item uh, where you can enter decimal places and one item without decimal places and you can check uh, these decimal places and you can check transaction that decimal places correctly display in your uh, transactions. Then uh, you can create uh, suppliers and customers and uh, you can check these uh, customers, inactive customers uh, and uh, inactive suppliers uh, correctly displaying uh, transactions and reports. Okay, uh, you can enter transactions from customer transaction and here customer codes and uh, click code and from here drop down menu you can check and you can check reports from customers reports and uh, from here you can check reports okay uh, please create uh, a few customers suppliers and items and check uh, today's session uh, settings okay Next session, uh, we will start from item settings. Uh, after four o'clock, uh, you can practice uh, today's session. OK, uh, and also uh, if you have any questions, please ask or you can uh, type, uh, send in chat box and uh, please clear all doubts. OK, thank you very much. Stay safe. Okay, students. Uh, so you can use your another hour uh, until four uh, five o'clock to practice stage fifty. So if you have any clarifications, you can contact me. Uh, okay, then we'll end up session. Thank you, students.